Hello, thank you for watching this video of the DTC Vibration Control System. In this short video, we will go over the setup for a random vibration test. From the main screen in the DTC Control software, click on the icon for random. That brings us into the default setup for random vibration test software. We see many different icons across the top of the screen. We see system configuration. We also see edit channels. System configuration is very similar to the overall configuration that we saw in the other video. From here, we could go in and make adjustments to our shaker setup, including changing the mass. So maybe for this test, we have a heavier fixture. We can enter that in here and that will update the calculations for the acceleration capability of our shaker, which will help us which will help prevent us from running tests that are outside our shaker capabilities. In the accelerometer setup, we can go in and make any adjustments necessary to the accelerometer that we're using. Keep in mind that when we do this change to the accelerometer from the individual test mode, such as we are right now in random, it will only apply for this random test. It will not change the global setup for the accelerometer. We have overall general control parameters for each test mode. So for random, this is what it looks like. We have the test parameters. We have the weighted averaging, or we can do min or max. We have running parameters where we can set loop gain and slew rate and other settings. On any screen, when you see the help button, simply click on there and it will take you to the appropriate section of the help file. This is very handy when troubleshooting any problems you may encounter. Going to advanced, we see we have some selections for sigma clipping. By default, sigma clipping is disabled. For safety parameters, uh, this has to do with the startup of the test or the equalization checks. Let's look at actually setting up our test profile. We can Plan on leaving all of these defaults in the control parameters for most any test we're going to run. So if I click on this icon here, it opens the edit test window. Here's where we can set up our actual profile. Now if you have a very long profile that's available in a text file or a spreadsheet file, you can simply click the import from file and bring in all of your breakpoints. We can see the default shows the 20, 80, 350, 2000 hertz uh, nav mat profile. We can insert additional steps. We can delete steps from this table. Uh, we can append. So I can add an additional breakpoint at the end. Or if I say I don't want that, I can simply delete that. We get the calculated RMS value of this profile. We can also adjust this. Which would, get, which would maintain the same shape as our defined profile, but we could maybe lower the RMS value if we wanted to. You can see that shifted down slightly in the graph above. So it also changed our breakpoints in our table. The next tab is the limits. This is very nice when looking at how close we are to the actual capabilities of our shaker. So based on the settings that we went through in the other video that talk about the shaker limits, we can see all of these values are in green and it shows a percentage of the capability of our shaker. This is a nice sanity check once you entered a profile to make sure that you aren't exceeding the limits of your shaker. If we were, these values would show in red and would, the software would prevent us from running the test. The next tab is the schedule. This is where we define how long we want to actually run the test. Now our default has a couple startup test levels. 
50% for 10 seconds, 75% for 10 seconds, and then we go to full level, and our default test was five minutes. We can go in and actually define maybe we want a 15 minute test. Let's look at the drop downs for the type for these steps. Test level, which is we're actually going to run the test. We can put pauses in there. We can start a loop or end a loop. So if you have to run a part for, let's say, 15 minutes and then do a functional check, we can put a, a pause in there and we can put loop steps. And so maybe we have to do that 10 times. So this helps us to automate that process. We can automatically uh, save test data uh, at certain points in our schedule. Uh, we can also automatically create a report. And there also is an option for digital I.O. There's a connection on the back of the hardware that allows you to send uh, input and output signals uh, to and from the box. And you can schedule those throughout your test. So maybe it's turning on uh, an actuator that uh, is cycling your part while it's under vibration or triggering some other external data acquisition so whatever you might need for that I.O. That is the basic setup for a random vibration test. We can click OK, and we can simply click Run. Now my box, the relay is clicked in my box. The hardware is initializing. And as soon as it's completed with that, we will start to see our random spectrum come into view on our graph. So it's doing a test equalization. We see that there. We see this test information. I see all of these uh, channels that says their open loop or gain is low. And the reason for that is I have nothing connected to channels two through eight. So here we are, we're running our first step for 10 seconds. Now we're going our next step. Remember we had the first two steps at reduced levels. And we see our total time right here. We have time remaining. So now we're at full level and we're running our random profile. It's working on the averaging and we're getting better and better control over time. Up across the top, there's many other icons. There's different cursors that we can look at. So we could have a single cursor. We can drag that around. We also have a delta cursor. So we can see the values between the two cursors. Uh, we can also look at harmonic cursors. You can see the different values there. So I can drag that start frequency wherever I want that and I get my harmonics. Simply click on these to turn them off. We're back to a fresh screen. So that's the general overview for a basic random vibration test. Uh, as you can see it's a very simple system to set up and use and you can quickly be up and running with your random vibration test profiles. Thank you for watching this video.